in the NFL, there's some players that are good. You classified yourself as that. I would argue that. There's some people that are great and elite. And then there's some players that are just special. Now, granted, normally those special players are the ones that end up in the Hall of Fame. But we were talking about Patrick Mahomes. And you said that you could tell from day one when Troy Polamalu walked into the Pittsburgh Steelers facility that you knew you were playing alongside a Hall of Famer. What was it about Troy that just made him so different? And as a follow-up question, maybe help spark your mind a little bit. Pro Football Focus rated me the punter of the decade. No big deal. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Uh, congrats, thank, congrats. Thank congrats, you. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a belt. Got a championship. The um, <laughs> Pro Football Focus always has people question it, right? Because they score every single play for every single player. For kickers and punters, it's very easy to see if we did what we were supposed to do. But for other positions, like in the secondary, you have no idea what one person's supposed to do. A safety might supposed to be covering for a corner. They're might supposed to blitz. So maybe somebody gets a bad rating from them when it's not what they're supposed to do. Pro football focus can't tell what's going on there. So that's kind of the knock on it. With Troy Polamalu, did you guys have any clue what he was doing or was he just kind of in his own world and he was like that? Was he like that since day one in the jump? So... Everybody knows Troy is strong in his faith, right? Yeah. So it was about two or three, about once a quarter. And we used to say, Troy, God told you to be right here because he knew this was going to happen. Why he don't talk to us like that? <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. You feel me, P-Mac? Yeah. So Troy just had that uh, that instinct. And his nickname for for some part was Baby Jesus. We used to call him Baby Jesus because <laughs> you know Troy Troy just knew things was going to happen before it even happened, and he didn't share his information with nobody. <laughs> the reason why Troy didn't share his information with nobody was he didn't want anybody else to get out of character. So if he did mess up, he can just say it was all on him. He didn't he don't want to bring nobody down with him. But Troy was that instinctive. Whatever he saw, whatever he saw on tape, whatever he saw on the field. He didn't hesitate on on seeing it, believing it, and making that play. But it's just a lot of instinctive things, God-given abilities. Like, I had the ability to be fast, jump high, couldn't catch, but I could tackle. <laughs> Troy, <laughs> Troy, Troy had the ability to – I know what they're saying in a huddle because God didn't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> That kind, of, that kind of ability, P Mac. So yeah, it felt TP that way. was yeah. TP was just different, man. Like, but but then it was all about we, you know. Troy Troy really made the locker room as a guy being that special. You can just genuinely say like Troy just a good soul, man. What we doing? Like it was never about I. Like we had to get Troy from start wearing a two strap tennis shoes. You know the two strap tennis shoes your grandma or your grandpa wear? Well, like TP, bro, you got too much money, bro. You gotta come into some at least some converse or something, dog. Golly, bro. Okay, <laughs> that so was Troy. So when you're watching film the next day though, right? And the film's breaking down and some teams, I don't know if this is how the Steelers work, but the good plays from the game before they would highlight it from each particular like offense. Here's a couple good plays that we think really sparked a difference because a lot of coaches' messages are like, Hey, a lot of the game is just sparring. And then there's a couple plays that are the big hits and you have no idea when the play is coming. The play doesn't care who makes it, but these are the plays we feel like really busted it open. Right? So they'll like, we'd play an offensive play and then they would ask the person like, Hey, why'd you do this? Why'd you do this? I felt this. I feel like if there was ever to be a, a tape of a lot of what Troy Polamalu does, it would be a lot of the D coordinator, uh, which was the legendary, what's his name? Dick LeBeau. Dick, Dick LeBeau. Dick LeBeau turning to him and going like, uh, so how did we know, <laughs> how did we know that this was going to happen? And you just decided to jump over the offensive line. Like, was there ever that conversation? Or was everybody like, oh, yeah, that's just what TP does. Like, that's just how it goes. Yeah, it, 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 he was just that creative. It's like off the script, like a spur of a moment. Like, TP, like, how, how do you how do you play in a secondary and know a cadence of a quarterback? <laughs> like, how do you time that out perfect? You got guys that play on the defensive line for 60 snaps, and they still jumping off sides. So how do you on the fly off of a motion – Know the cadence to the quarterback and get the quarterback for a sack or tackle for loss. Oh, you've been talking to Jesus. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's 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 exactly how you get to do that. But Troy was just very instinctive. He was different, he was just unique. And them plays, like you say, just timing the snap count, not getting off sides and making a play on fourth and one when he needed to. That's what TP did. Hey, Zito, find that interview that he just did with that guy for Head and Shoulders where he talked about yeah. why he mm -hmm. ruined my life. I think it's like four minutes into that. <laughs> a lot of people enjoy the story of me 
I had a chance to score a touchdown in Pittsburgh. It was a primetime game. We had a fake field goal set up, right? Okay. It was a hundred percenter, Ike. You know, in the world of football and film, they don't say anything's a hundred percenter, but whenever something's a hundred percenter, they're like, hey, listen. It's a hundred. It's hey. This is it. We got to walk in. We didn't even have a checkout. We didn't even have like a blackout of the call. It was like, hey, we are doing this if we're in the situation. If we're inside like the six yard line on the left hash, we have, a, gu- we have a guaranteed walk in touchdown. And I was like, awesome. I'm going to score a touchdown in Pittsburgh if this happens. We end up in that situation. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I am going to score a touchdown. In Troy, just like to what you said, had a little conversation with the Jesus man. He was like, oh, hey, hey, by the way, I just want to let you know, for the last like 13 years of your <laughs> career, you've only lined up on this side. But tonight, in this particular situation, you should just go over to the other side and ruin that kid from the East Hill of Pittsburgh's life and sit <laughs> right over there. And if an off balance to the short side of the field, like, are you looking at the shot right now? You yeah, see? I'm looking at it. Have you ever seen that lineup in a field goal formation to the to the short side of the field, an unbalanced formation over there? It's no, just, that's what gave that's what gave it away. No, it wasn't the defense. Look at where Troy's lined up. Troy was normally always on the uh, left side over there. He just correct, but he, he looking at the short he looking at the short side. He looking at the short side, unbalanced side. So I mean, but only only I'm I'm seeing it now, but Troy saw it because the good man above had talked to him before. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking at it now. As soon as you pull it up, I can tell what you about to do. But at the time, I'm not Oh, I get, the, <laughs> I get the hell. You were good, Ike. Okay, you weren't special. You aren't seeing that right now. Okay, you're no, all- right, right, right now I can see it, but on the field, no, that, only Troy saw that. <sighs> only Troy saw that because the good man talked to him was like, you know what, Pete Mack about to get the ball, don't let him scope. <laughs> Ike, listen to this. He just finally answered what happened. He literally okay. just answered in the last couple of days. I don't know what this kid's name is, but he's on the YouTube and he got a chance to interview him for head and shoulders. To the field. This is what we've been doing all year long. This is what we've been doing during, you know, we need to find a time to throw it into the boundary. And we had talked about this before the Indianapolis Colts game. Okay. So I went to him on the sidelines. We discussed, like, hey, man, you know, they're probably going to make this field goal or extra point, whatever it was. It's like, let's just throw it in right now. It happened to be at the exact same time. Awesome. What do you know? (laughs) (laughs) What do you know? What do you know? Right? Hold on. What do you know? Okay, Spidey Sense. Okay. Get my inner Peter Parker. Right. <laughs> His inner Peter Parker, right? <laughs> <laughs> aka Baby Jesus. So, and to, to be to be very honest, I could tell by Pat's energy and the way that he came off the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> he too excited. Yeah. Told you, see, okay. told so you, P Mac. You know, he's got a lot of tells in this. So, <laughs> <laughs> told you, P Mac can't hold no secret, man. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all better be careful if P-Mac, t- if y'all tell P-Mac a secret, just make sure it might go viral. <laughs> oh my God, I, that was Troy Polamalu addressing the infamous fake for the first time ever. And he said that they lined up on the field side every single time they wanted to show a boundary block. And he said, well, since it's an easy field goal, let's just show this on film or whatever. That's what he literally just said. And it mm-hmm. just so happens to be <laughs> yeah. the one where I'm going to run it for a touchdown. Then he says, Peter Parker, his spider sense. I was too excited coming on the field. I don't need it, Troy. Okay, now that I know that it was him and Jesus all along, I mean, we're in a bad spot. See, I mean, he just, he, that's that's that gift. <laughs> that's, that's that gift, man. I, he different, man. He's special. What was the kid's name that he interviewed with? We should give that kid credit. He's on YouTube. He got an interview with Troy Polamalu, asked him why he decided to ruin my life, and Troy gave answers. My first time learning of why he chose to do that. And RBT. It's a whole new day. RBT. Shout out RBT on YouTube. But, um, yeah, welcome back. It's great to have you, man. I had to watch it back. Uh, Diggs has a big question for you. You were going to say something. What were you going to say? Yeah. Well, no, I'm just curious. Why did you guys not have a check out of that fake? Because it was 100 percenter, AJ. It was 100 percenter. Obviously not. Obviously not. <laughs> Well, it obviously wasn't because Troy Polamalu, we just found out from a teammate of his, literally got whisperings from the Jesus Christ and told him whenever plays were coming. That's the only reason why it didn't work. And Troy Polamalu just admitted to our guy, RBT, on YouTube that they all year they had a field rush, field rush, field rush. And he said, ah, this feels like the right time to put in a boundary rush just for film. And it just so happened to be the time that I was going to score a touchdown. And the more and more that comes out about Troy, there was no chance I was ever going to score. The guy knew it was happening. Happening as I was jogging on the damn field. 
So did your special teams coach just have that much faith in your athleticism that no matter what look they lined up in, you were going to score? It was a hundred percenter, AJ. They they had a field rush. They didn't have enough men to the field. Or the- I get it. I get what you're saying, Pat, but it obviously is not a hundred percenter. You didn't score. Well, because I made a special quarterback audible and checked out of it to the kick, I still think I could have ran over another player around another player. If Troy Polamalu gets his hands on me, he picks me up and carries me to the other end zone as a touchdown for himself. I understand that because I'm not going to fumble the rock. I'll hold on to it. He'll carry me down. But I, I, I chose to check out of it for the good of the team, good for Vinatieri. But on film, they didn't have enough humans over there. We had them outnumbered. It was a walk-in touchdown for the holder if we're inside the six-yard line. There was no moves to be made. I was supposed to catch the snap stand up and walk into the end zone. There was nothing to be said about Troy Paulo Amalu coming over to that side and ruining my life, which now I learned just strictly he was doing it just for film to ruin other people's lives. And he was doing it just because he had little Peter Parker Spidey sense inside. And that's just unfair that that human got to play on the same field as me. I should have been playing against people that didn't have Jesus talking to them and didn't have Peter Parker playing. I would like to potentially petition the NFL that if any players are getting Jesus Christ speaking Speaking to him directly, they are not allowed in the NFL. That should be a PED suspension if you have the Jesus talking to you in your ear telling you what you do. Yeah, has it made you rethink uh, your faith? Are you going to dive deeper into your faith now because of that play? I'm too far gone. I'm too far gone. <laughs> Troy, Troy was... <laughs> 